Well, good morning. Uh, today is Saturday, the 25th of April. It is the Feast of St. Mark the Evangelist. And so we celebrate St. Mark today. We give thanks for this uh, testimony, this gospel writer that we have. Uh, it's a bittersweet day for the uh, Rigel family because it's also the day that Sarah Dekins and her sister Chloe uh, return back to France. And so um, we will pray for their safe travel and wish them well as uh, they continue their lives. And uh, the time that we had together, we consider very blessed. Well, we begin with the confession on page 12 of your Book of Common Prayer. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Pascha Nostrum, the Christ our Passover, is found on page 16. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Uh, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 2, and it's found on page 270 of the Book of Common Prayer. Why do the nations so furiously rage together, and why do the peoples devise a vain thing? The kings of the earth stand up, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He who dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his great anger. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I shall give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall bruise them with a rod of iron and break them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, O you kings. Be warned, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord in fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in your way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are those, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark, whose feast we celebrate today, uh, chapter 16, the last chapter in the book, beginning uh, at the 15th verse and continuing to the end. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now continue with the canticle for Saturday, canticle 10. It's found on page 87 of the Book of Common Prayer. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all the powers of the Lord. O heavens and all the waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, Frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters, all birds of the air. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beast of the wild and all ye flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Please join with me, my friends, in prayer. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Fill us with the peace that passes all understanding, the assurance of the hope that is in Jesus Christ, the assurance of the gospel and good news that God's love for the world is greater than our sins, greater than our selfishness, greater than our loneliness. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Well, today is the feast of St. Mark, the evangelist, the writer of the shortest gospel, but the fast-paced gospel, the one that includes immediately, immediately, the, the symbol of Mark that's been traditionally assigned is that of a pouncing lion, uh, rapid movement as we move from one thing to another. Uh, today uh, is the 
the reading that was chosen is the last part of the last chapter. And it's the Great Commission. It's the Great Commission as recorded in Mark's Gospel. <clears throat> and, you know, it's, it's a commandment to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel um, to the whole creation. And in that proclamation, people are called to believe in the gospel, and the gospel is centered on Jesus Christ, to believe in Christ as their Lord, their Savior, that by his action, his work on the cross, he made propitiation, he satisfied, he um, culminated in his sacrifice, uh, that which we cannot do on our own, so that we can be restored. And those who accept this grace can become sons and daughters of God the Father. Jesus becomes our brother. And the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is the great enabler. And I, I don't mean that in any um, weak sense. I, when I mean enabler, the very power of God, who is, um, we're on his side and he's on ours because we're seeking to serve the Lord. And so the commandment is to go and proclaim this good news to all the world. Uh, this is why it's difficult for those of us who f take the scriptures seriously. To It's very difficult for us to appreciate this, any sense of isolation that people may feel in the sense that the church is just the local church and it's just us and, and we're, we're, we're the body of Christ and everyone else is, well, that's their problem. It couldn't be further from the reality that we're called to live in. The church is a universal what we call Catholic Church, worldwide universal church. It, it's the church that's present, uh, the church militant. It's the church to come, the people who are not yet Christians, the church expectant. And, and it's the church at rest, uh, those who have gone before. They're also part of the church for, for life. Uh, it doesn't, uh, at death, uh, life is changed, not ended. And so this is that universal church that you and I are called to be a part of. It's, it's global, it's cosmic, it's, it's unending, it's God's family. And we cannot say to one or the other, you just handle your problem over there and we'll take care of our little problem over here. We're not at liberty to even be indifferent to the suffering of non-Christians. Our stewardship and our command is to go and proclaim the gospel so that people may believe and be baptized and be saved. That's the order. Uh, believe, baptize, save. That's the order that you, you see listed in verse 16. And they were giving signs. And those signs are, are kind of funny uh, because we like some and we don't like some. And what I mean by that is they're signs that make us nervous because we've seen what looks like abuses, and they may be, um, and things that might make us uncomfortable. I speak English poorly, uh, but uh, what about uh, when we are called to study a foreign language? Uh, what we saw happening at Pentecost. What about in the charismatic aspect of the church where, where some of us speak in tongues? We pray in tongues, the, the prayer language that God gives us. That makes some people extremely uncomfortable because they've seen it abused. They don't understand it. They don't know the purpose. And so here we have part of that being told, that there will be signs accompanying this proclamation and those who believe. And some of them sounds fine. We'll, we'll cast out demons. Okay, check. Uh, you, you know, we perform exorcisms, minor exorcisms, all the time. Simply giving someone blessing. When someone is blessed, you're casting out evil because evil cannot be in the presence of goodness. Goodness, light casts out darkness. Goodness casts out evil. A blessing casts out. And so we have minor exorcisms all the time. We think of the big ones in the movie, uh, but you know every baptism, there's a, there's a rite of exorcism and baptism. We're praying, you know, Satan be gone. And so it's not spooky or scary after all if we understand that it's simply bringing the light of Christ into the dark world and casting out darkness. So that's the first one. Um, the, my name demons will be cast out. Speaking in tongues, the, the tongues that God gives us so that uh, sometimes a person who's never been um, schooled of, in a foreign language is heard 
uh, by natives in their mother tongue, even though the person speaking it doesn't know the language. I've heard s several stories of that, um, several instances where that's occurred over the, over the over the centuries. And, and of course, you have um, also the speaking in new tongues is in the prayer language that people give and. And that, too, can be a tremendous blessing because there are times we don't have the words to say. They don't form, or the effort taken in, in forming the words and thought becomes a, a hindrance to prayer. So I, I hope there's a certain comfort. Where, where we start getting really uncomfortable, I think, is in 18, where uh, picking up serpents with their hands. I have no desire to pick up a snake. I don't like snakes. The only snake I like is a dead snake. And I know that makes some people upset, Fine, take it up with the Dead Snake Society. I don't like them. But what does this mean? Taking up snakes, does that mean I need to go pick up one to prove my faith? No, and that's the part of the abuse that we see. Uh, it goes hand in hand with the drinking of deadly poison. Let me give you an apocryphal story about St. John. That's the St. John of the Bible, John. Not John the Baptist, but John the Younger, John the, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved, the author of the, the letters, the author of um, the gospel, the author of the book of Revelation, or the one who recorded uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, this John, by pious tradition, um, people tried to kill him. And, and in fact, they used... Uh, uh, poison from a snake and put it in a drink and here here's a cocktail a poisonous cocktail drink it and and John didn't die uh, Saint Benedict if you're familiar with the uh, Benedictine rule or Benedictine monks or anything to do with Saint Benedict um, his own monks his first set of monks they actually tried to poison him they put poison in a, in a cup here drink this enjoy it bon appetit um, and it didn't kill him this is not for us to put to the test. We just simply need to know that God's will is greater than man's. And there are instances and times where people have uh, assassination attempts. Think of John Paul II. The man should, be, should have been dead from the assassination attempt that occurred uh, at, at, at the Vatican as he was in the square. But as, as he said, uh, a miracle occurred and the bullet was moved. And his life was spared. And now we know him, know him as St. John Paul. Uh, so, again, these signs are not things that we own. But if it's God's will to give it to us for a greater, to his glory, then so be it. I'm willing to get a little uncomfortable if that's what helps to make the gospel be proclaimed. Um, but nonetheless, we need to take it because this is a promise that Jesus made. So we, we're not at the liberty to say, well, I don't like that sign. Well, you know, um, okay, uh, but they're there and it's a promise. And then, of course, we have the wonderful statement in verse 19 where Jesus is taken up to heaven and sits down at the right hand of God. And you heard that in the Pascha Nostra in Christ our Passover. Where is he now? He's sitting at the right hand of God. You'll hear it as we say the creed. Where is Jesus now? He's ascended into heaven, and he will come again. And so these are promises. This is part of the good news. And as it ends, this gospel ends, it says, you know, the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. Jesus works with you. He works with me. He works with Holy Cross. He works with all Christians uh, to fulfill his purposes. And so may I suggest that rather than chafing and saying, I will not, which echoes a bit of Satan who says, I will not serve, or at least that's attributed to him. Maybe we could just be honest and say, Lord, I'm uncomfortable with that, but your will, not what my will be done. Seems much more akin to Jesus. And so in the Gospel of St. Mark, on this feast day, we celebrate. We bring great joy uh, on the Gospel proclamation. And uh, I invite you now to continue, uh, join with me, uh, by saying the Creed together. And the Creed is found uh, on page 20 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He 
descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. Lead us in ways of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Now, the colic of the day is uh, from, uh, uniquely, because this is a uh, celebration of of the gospel uh, of a, of a feast, so our colic is not from the previous Sunday, but there's actually a special prayer assigned for the 25th of April, uh, the feast of Saint Mark. It's found on page 628. Almighty God, by the hand of Mark the evangelist, you have given to your church the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for his witness and pray that you will give us grace to know the truth and not to be carried about by every wind of false doctrine, that we may know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And the colic for Saturday, it's a Sabbath rest. <clears throat> Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested uh, from all your works, and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures. Grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for e the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second prayer for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may come, may, may everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers, intercessions, or thanksgivings that you may certainly offer to the Lord immediately now, anytime. You're also invited and encouraged to leave those prayer requests and praise reports by going to our website for Holy Cross Stateburg. And go to the website, and there's a page there dedicated to prayer requests and praise reports. And if you leave your prayer request there, there's a place where I'll be notified and I can join in with prayer. Others can join in. And there's a place where they can click a button and it will indicate that they have prayed with you. Uh, and so that's a way of us as a community praying together, one for the other. And so I invite that uh, those prayer requests uh, either now or, or in the future. Uh, also, um, I'm going to take a moment of silence so that you can actually lift up those prayers and then we'll begin in a moment for uh, the prayers for those we love and prayers for those who travel on page 662.
as I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, uh, of this broadcast um, today on Saturday, uh, this is the 25th of April, Feast of St. Mark, uh, Sarah and her sister Chloe depart for France to return back home to their town. Um, Sarah arrived with us on the Feast of uh, the Transfiguration, uh, which was the 6th of August. And so she's been here in Sumter uh, since the 6th of August and then departs today on the uh, 25th of April. Um, there's more to this story. There's not time to give, but uh, su suffice it to say that, uh, and some of you have heard uh, my testimony before, but uh, Debbie and I were told that we could not, should not expect to have children. And so God blessed us with a miracle baby, and that's Albert. And uh, you cannot, I cannot express the excitement and joy of this blessing that Albert was given to us, a miracle baby and child. Uh, but uh, we were, you know, you can't demand miracles. You can't say, okay, that was that was a miracle. We got our boy, now we want our girl and God deliver. Uh, you can't do that. One has to be appreciative for, for whatever God gives us, you know. Blessed be God, whether it be rain or sunshine. And he chose to give us a, a, a boy and a miracle, and we have Albert, and we are so grateful. But that forced me to reconcile myself with the fact that, you know, there wouldn't be any other children. And being me, I always wanted a boy and a girl. And so, you know, you have to deal with that. And then out of uh, the blue, we get this opportunity uh, to have a young lady uh, through the Rotary Exchange, International Exchange Program. And it was just something that we felt that we have a house, a rectory, extra room. We used it before for the glory of God. Use it here. I helped out Taylor Ward, uh, whose uh, family is a member of Holy Comforter, and she went to Belgium, and she needed to find someone here uh, to take her place, so to speak. And so that all started out just fine and dandy, and then we just met this young woman, and God just touched my heart, and he said, you know, you ask, patience, here's a, here's a daughter for a season, and so enjoy. And so, in a sense, it's it's been a blessing to us to, and particularly to me, uh, to have uh, for a season. And, and I guess you could always say, I, I look at Joe Rhodes and Tina, and they always say, you know, they talk about their uh, adopted children, so to speak. They have their natural children, but the children that God has placed in their lives, they haven't really legally adopted them. But in a sense, Sarah is one of those children of ours. She's our French daughter now, and and that little blessing. Uh, added to our family and to our church family. And, you know, Sarah worshiped with us at Holy Cross while she was with us. And her last Sunday was uh, the 17th of November uh, at Holy Cross. And just such a blessing. Well, anyway, um, I want to give these prayers today for those we love and for those who travel. And of course, there's a place for you to fill in the blank too, because I'm sure that there are people you love and there are people that you know that are traveling. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us, especially Sarah and Chloe, uh, to your never-failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And of course, I'm grateful for Debbie and Albert and for my church family. Uh, certainly, what I'm saying here is not in any way meant to distract from them. And I, of course, also pray for Sarah's family, uh, for Sarah, her twin, Chloe, her older sister, Alicia, and, older, and her brother, Jeremy, for her father, Anthony, and mother, Leticia, and even Laura, who is a friend of Sarah's and one of the exchange students that we got to know and who visited with us. Uh, we pray for them and give thanks for them, too, and uh, for those who travel. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, especially Sarah and her sister Chloe. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so Sarah departs this morning uh, from it, uh, from Charlotte. We'll go to New York, JFK. She'll meet with Chloe there. And uh, then they're flying an Air France flight to Paris where her parents will pick the girls up, which will be Sunday morning, probably around 9, if I recall correctly. Uh, so they'll be, this traveling will be over the course of the day. 
and so we just continue to lift them up in prayer and uh, and I thank you all for sharing uh, uh, that time with us uh, and allowing us to have her uh, with you uh, and, and part of the church family too. Well, let's continue now uh, with the general thanksgiving found on page 25. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. You will grant their request. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of, of your truth and the age to come in life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or even imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in his church. In Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Well, this broadcast at 10, um, at noon today, Saturday, from noon to 2, you may come by the Church of the Holy Cross, 335 North Kings Highway, and pick up reserved sacrament, that is the host that I have consecrated. And uh, our senior warden, uh, Walter, will be distributing uh, for me. And these are placed individually in sanitary uh, Ziploc bags. And uh, what we're inviting you to do is uh, take these home, put them in a safe place, place of honor, and then at communion on Sunday, at 10 o'clock communion, or whenever you are able to watch um, at that point, of, that point of consecration. And once we have invited you to receive communion, uh, please feel free then to take the host and receive it and receive communion of the body and blood of Christ, uh, to receive one half of the species to receive the whole sacrament. And so... Uh, I invite you to partake. And recognizing not everybody can, for a variety of reasons, we will also pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Uh, but this is a gift that the bishop has been able to give us, and uh, uh, we certainly want to uh, appreciate it and, and use it uh, for the purposes that it's given, which is to nourish us through word and sacrament. And so uh, between today, between 12 and 2, uh, Walter will be at the church. And again, uh, I invite you then to join us tomorrow, Sunday, the 26th of April, uh, for the third Sunday of Easter and the celebration of communion. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.